Hi, everybody. So I'm really excited to be here today. We have kind of a random little podcast that we are doing, and uh, we are going to be talking about two different animated films that came up in the animation showdown. Uh, we're going to be looking at Prince of Egypt and Moana and, and kind of comparing and contrasting them. And uh, my friend Darren is here uh, to, to do this with me. And do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, yeah. My name is Darren. I'm a follower of Rachel on Twitter, and I'm just a animation enthusiast. Awesome. Yeah, we, we, we had this animation showdown, and I think it was in the second round that Moana and Prince of Egypt came up against each other. So they weren't an initially pitted against each other because I think I had Hunchback versus Prince of Egypt in the first round, and I had Lilo and Stitch versus Moana in the first round. But then the second round, they came up uh, against each other. And I made the, I guess, the comment that as much as I love Moana, like clearly I have a poster, I love, 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 love Moana, that I, I think that Prince of Egypt is a stronger film. And, and you had replied, really? And you were kind of surprised by that. And so that's what sort of inspired us to have this conversation and to have this, uh, uh, this analysis. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just um, interested to hear your uh, why you chose that and um, just wanted to talk about it. Yeah. And for the record, in when we did uh, the uh, tournament this last uh, Saturday, uh, uh, Moana beat Prince of Egypt. So pretty, I think all three of my uh, uh, co-hosts, I can't remember, maybe Mike voted for Prince of Egypt. I can't remember, but they all ag agreed with Moana. So Maybe it's just me, but uh, <laughs> this is going to be fun to talk about. And uh, so we're going to go over some key sort of aspects of both films and talk about, talk about each of them. And uh, so it should be fun. Like I said, this is sort of random, but sometimes this can be the most fun is doing these random ones. So yeah. uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the story of both films. Okay. And uh, so, of course, you have your story of the Moses story in Prince of Egypt. <laughs> One of the most epic stories ever in the history of stories. Uh, if, if anything, I guess maybe something that some might say hurt it is that it is a very often told story. And so it's something that some people might feel like is boring or just like, oh, I've heard this story so many times. Right. Um, I, well, I thought that it, it had a unique challenge because, well, compared to Moana, so I was looking at these, um, mm -hmm. where it's, it's a story that's, like you said, it's well known and it's been told and the people making it had to turn it into an animation story, you know, in the animated form, as opposed to Moana, I think was built from the ground up um, to be an animated film. Correct. That is true. Uh, do, now, do you think that they did things with the Prince of Egypt uh, that are sort of unique, or can you see like a different approach compared to other uh, Ten Commandments kind of stories? Um, I'm not sure, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm not too familiar with too many. Uh, are you talking about in animated forms? No, no, just just, uh, just the other the other versions that we've seen uh, in the movies, like Charlton Heston and and things like that. I mean, what I I guess the thing that I love, a couple of things that I really love, and we'll talk more about this with the characters, but a couple of things I really love about the way that they told this story is I think that there is a a sense of reverence and a intimate feel to the story that you don't get in any of the other versions uh, that you really feel like, at least to me, you really feel like there are these two brothers and from the very beginning, you sort of get to know their story and, and their perspectives. And you get to see that Ramses is from the very beginning told that he is can't be the weak link and so you establish this like personal intimate kind of story uh to this epic big story and i i love the trial test one i love it it's amazing but i think that it is kind of all big i don't get those kind of intimate personal moments 
as much. I would say Ben Hur does a little better with that than Ten Commandments. Um, but anyway, so that's just my sort of take that I appreciate that they they really kind of tried to make something small out of a very big story. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. I see how they, you know, when they introduce the brothers and they're kind of mischievous playing there, it shows their their connection to each other. Yeah. So, now, with Moana, I think the strength of the story is that you have a kind of an, a, a, a hero's journey and Odysseus kind of story, yeah, as opposed to a Moses kind of story. And some people might say that it's a first, some people might claim that it's a formula hero story. We've certainly seen similar stories, you know, the independent, uh, independent girl or girl or boy desiring to sort of break free and going on this journey and having a lovable sidekick and you know you can you can see some of these i guess tropes but i think that it's executed extremely well and so it doesn't matter to me if you use tropes or if you use a, a familiar formula if you execute it well and i think they do and also i think it has that feel of of the odyssey in the sense that the there's all of these different creatures that they come in contact with and have to kind of defeat. Like you have Medusa and the Odyssey and stuff like that. It's sort of like the coconut pirates are sort of similar or so. I don't know. Uh, what do you think about the story of Moana? Um, well, I agree. I think it, it is the hero's journey. You can, you can kind of identify it, but yeah, they, they executed it well. It's not, it's not like I'm going along, you know, recognizing, oh, you know, now they're going to do this. I felt like it was, it was very fresh and uh, it was interesting. It keeps you interested um, the whole way. And it definitely develops her, you know, she develops as a person, as a leader. And, you know, she, she gets through this part of her life that she's, um, that she's at when we start the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, and what they have, what she has to face up against is I think unpredictable enough that it keeps it fresh, like you're saying. I mean, I never seen a movie with coconut pirates or, or giant <laughs> singing David Bowie crab or, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. Like, so that keeps it fresh. That keeps it fun. And also, I think that the journey is hard enough for her. Uh, the, uh, you know, a lot of people claim like different characters are Mary Sue's, which I absolutely hate so much. But uh, I think moana is a character that things are t are hard for her like the the water the ocean only helps her when it's absolutely necessary uh other than that like she's you know she crashes and she she <laughs> she has challenges and things like that which i think make it better than some hero's journeys yeah definitely a lot depends on her you know she has to really dig down and mm -hmm. Um, she has to figure things out and, and use her strength. Um, so I thought that was a very strong point. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, so let's talk about the characters. I actually want to divide this up and talk about the lead characters and the side characters. So you have, in the case of Prince of Egypt, you have two lead characters, I would say. You have obviously Moses and you have Ramses. Mm -hmm. And I really think that they do a good job, as I kind of already mentioned here, of building up both characters and their personalities and who they are. And, you know, the, you have one is sort of the, is, is the weak link and he develops this or is afraid of being the weak link, Ramses. And so he develops this pride that is in the end kind of his undoing uh, as a character because he can't let go of that idea of being the weak link and it's just something that like haunts him and so that's why he his pride is hurt by by the by moses really and by the the jews and by the plagues and everything like that more than the actual damage themselves it's it's his pride definitely yeah you you see that um you see him take off in that direction from the beginning and you can see how that's going to him and Moses are going to butt heads later. Yeah. And Moses uh, is a character that I, I really, I think when he, he's sort of rash and selfish and what at the beginning, but then once he realizes that 
he was in the wrong, I, I really think you do see a pretty interesting character arc from him as a as character. Yeah. Do you agree? Um, yeah, you know, I've, the, I looked at that and I thought it would have, I guess his, his development, his change from being, you know, an, an Egyptian prince type of character to a, you know, a servant of God, a servant of these people, I thought it wasn't quite explained. I mean, it show it showed it, um, but you know, it starts when um, what's the lady that he he befriends later in the desert? What's her name? Um, oh, um, the uh, uh, oh, what is her name? Uh, Tipora. Tipora is out. Yeah, yeah. The um, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. there there in the beginning, she's I guess she's a slave, and yeah. he's kind of treating her, you know, like a you know, like an object. And then, you know, he, he makes her fall in the water and everyone's laughing, but then all of a sudden he has a heart and he's like, Oh, she's sad. And then he, it just seems like, I guess it was kind of easy. Like it, it didn't seem very, very believable, you know, for why did, why did he have that change of heart when he's this rich prince who treats people as objects? Then all of a sudden he's like, wait a second, you know, she, she's sad. And, mm-hmm. and then, and then, you know, the, he finds out of course that he's not, who he is and that he comes from the Jews and everything. So that helps the case. But I, I just, I just thought it was kind of too easy how he, he switched teams. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, I love, I, I think the scene where he has sort of the nightmare and he real he, he, I love the animation in there. We'll talk about that more going on, but the, he has the nightmare and he, he realizes what his father, quote unquote father has done. So that's a big part of kind of, I think the motivation for him, changing uh, is that he realizes that his his father killed all of these these uh, these jewish babies and then when the when he actually says they were only hebrews you know that right so or we say they're only slaves i think or, something or only like that. slaves yeah right yeah. yeah that yeah so that that does definitely shows his his transition there but but yeah no that's fair and it is true about the um uh the you know the slave the men in the night uh that he treats and he does change pretty quickly on that one so i'll give you that for sure and it, it compared to the compared to some of the other versions i think uh that you know you you see it a little bit more maybe than some of the other versions of his transition but uh, it probably could still be even better <laughs> it probably could i'll sure. get uh, that what do you think of uh, Val Kilmer and Ray Fiennes uh, in their vocal work. Um, I thought, to be honestly, I, it's not something that um, I thought worked too well. Okay. Um, I I felt like we talk about um, the main characters, but he, I thought some yeah. of the the character voices were uh, didn't quite fit. Um, maybe the accents, or it, they seemed a little displacing. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure who who I didn't look into quite all of the the voice actors in it. I know that, that Val Kilmer okay. did that part. Yeah, Val Kilmer is Moses and Ray Fiennes is Ramses. I I think that they are actually quite good, and they do feel like somehow they to me feel like brothers, but they they sound different enough to believe that they're from different. Uh, they're from different worlds in a way too. So I, I thought they were lurked, but I do agree with you. We're going to talk, let's talk about the side characters. Now I do agree with you about the vocal performances on the side characters on pretty, on most of them. I mean, it's not a deal breaker for me, but I do think most of them feel too modern yeah. for the characters that they are portraying. And I think that I, I, I do like Danny Glover. I think he's good. I, I think, um, Patrick Stewart is good as the father of uh, as Seti, the the father of Ramses and Moses. But mm-hmm. someone like Sandra Bullock, I think, is a miss. Um, she's pretty modern. Michelle Pfeiffer, Jeff Goldblum, definitely. Is that is that um, who did Moses's brother? Is that um, Aaron? Yeah, that's okay. Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah, yeah. I, so I thought that was kind of like a New York accent, almost. You know, kind of that. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I mean, of course, if you if you watch the uh, Charlton Heston version, you have uh, you have Afro, was it Afro, Aphrodite and or uh, what's her name? I forget. Uh, that and then you have Edward G. Robinson playing. 
So yeah, <laughs> so it's a an improvement, right. an improvement <laughs> from that, I think. But, sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I agree. But aside from the vocal performances, uh, what do you think of sort of the the supporting cast? I guess. Um, well, I, I I think it. I mean, it, it went well. It worked well. I don't. I didn't. Nothing really stood out to me as as bad or great. It it flowed along. I guess I don't have much of an opinion on on yeah. that. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing I really don't like, and I think this is probably the the worst part of the movie, is the priests and their song, and particularly Steve Martin and Martin Short. I, I just think that I wish I. It's kind of like the gargoyle scene for me. Like I wish I could just take it and excise it from the movie because yeah. it just doesn't fit at all a tone, and uh, it. <laughs> It was pretty bad. I thought yeah. also. I agree there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the, like one of the reviews I read of Prince of Egypt was like, Oh, it's so, it, it takes itself so seriously for an animated film. And I'm like, Oh, and, <laughs> and I feel like that song was their attempt to be like, Oh, look, we're fun. Oh, right. right. And it's just like, why can't you just go all the way and be 100% a, you know, a story like this. And so right yeah that's a bummer it's a bummer but oh well what are you gonna do so let's talk about moana so moana is a wonderful character i mean she's sure to your classic hero but there's a couple of things i think that make her really different first of all she's very unselfish she uh, isn't going to go past the re she's going to be obedient until there's really no other options and she goes out for her people and she goes out because it's a calling it's for her and it's not out of some kind of impudence or uh or willfulness you know which i respond to those kind of characters as well but there's just something wonderful i think about her unselfishness in, in the character and uh, also i think her we should maybe talk a little bit i didn't mention it in the other one but her character design is wonderful you've got uh, uh just a more sort of normal relatable looking girl obviously she's from an, a a minority uh culture person of color which is really great and uh so overall she's just somebody that you really you feel for she has emotion to her character but she's also she, she's she's also fun she's just a great character yeah, I, I definitely love her. I mean, from the beginning when she's a little girl listening to the the monster stories, um, but she, you're right. She she does want to, you know, do what her parents tell her. She does want to do what's right, and I think you say that calling that keeps calling her. Um, you're, it's not like she's just trying to be mischievous or or, or being a rebel. She's. It's, I think she's scared of it, but after everything that's telling her what to she finally she goes for it because she she knows it deep inside that's what she has to do so it was a a big decision for her and it, it does really play out that way yeah yeah i mean i think that that those are the best kind of chosen ones you know like your frodo's and your things like that that they they are just doing it for other people they're not doing it for themselves and their own glory definitely so i agree i love I love Moana. What do you think about her character design? Um, I think it's great. It works well. I mean, even, you know, as a little kid and, and as her, her teenage design, um, I think it, it works great within the whole look of the film and everything. Yeah. Baby Moana is so adorable. <laughs> yeah. So adorable. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the side characters. This tends to be a little more divisive with Moana. Uh, so you have, uh, for, well, first of all, you have the great side character of Maui. Uh, right. Pretty much everyone loves Maui, right? <laughs> I, I think I don't know anyone that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why do you think Maui works so well as a character? Um, well, he's super interesting, and we we see. Uh, I mean, we see his. I guess his bad side or his weak side. And I think he has so much development through the, mo through the movie too. Um, he's, I guess at one point he was kind of the main character, I think, as I heard um, as they were making it, but he, um, he's just so charismatic. And I mean, he's a, he's a demigod, you know, he does so much, but yet he's still uh, kind of real human in that he's, 
he needs to take this girl's boat and, you know, ditch her on this island and he's kind of out for himself and he's not <clears throat> really worried about being a hero or anything. Yeah. Um, it's a real, co- real colorful character. Definitely. Well, I mean, there's this darkness to him too that, that you know, he his past and he's – uh, completely unwanted unloved and so there is something that that really is moving about his character when he could just be like some goofy sidekick yeah that's true that's a good point mm-hmm. yeah and you got his tattoos his character design is really great also uh that that's just very inventive and creative yeah i, I love that that was one of my favorite parts of the whole film is everything they did with his his tattoos mm-hmm. yeah uh and the rock got the rock <laughs> yeah he he just i like the rock already and and he just blew it away he blew the performance away yeah i mean we'll talk more about ale Cravalo in a little bit she's also just amazing what a find I oh think. yeah yeah definitely that's very fresh yeah and so okay so what about some of these side characters uh some of the other side characters you have hey hey the chicken which uh, seems to be probably the most controversial character <laughs> in the uh, in the movie uh, so people think he was really dumb people didn't like him hmm. and i i do think there is a little bit of a point that we've gotten a lot of these stupid characters from disney you know lately disney slash disney pixar uh you know with your uh um what's the seal's name in uh, finding dory i can't um i can't think of the name uh, well no it's not walter I can't remember. All of a sudden, my my brain is, but uh, but you got the stupid uh, stupid seal, and you actually have two kind of stupid characters in Finding Dory with Becky and you, the bird, uh, and uh, there's I don't know. I'm just trying to think. I know there's just, it just seems like there's been a bunch of sort of characters like that that are just sort of uh, the uh, the kind of slow stupid kind of character <laughs> sure yeah no i i think hey hey worked great um he i didn't find it over overused or anything i thought every once in a while they got to use him for a little punch line you know um yeah. just to keep him keep him there and um i thought he fit perfect i agree i really thought he was funny too it made me laugh so i i think that they if they keep going to that well it could get a little bit old Sure. But I'm not sick of it yet, personally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is surprising because in the marketing, you would think that it was would be Pua who would go on the journey with mm. her, and so that was surprising. I think that Pua wasn't used more in the movie. Yeah, yeah, I would wonder why why they made that decision to to not take him on the journey. But yeah, because Pua is so cute. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so then you have also uh, the you have her grandma as a side character. What do you think of her? Once again, a very great character. Um, she was the I forget what the word is in, in storytelling, but uh, kind of like the mentor. I thought mm-hmm. you know she she um, you could tell her and Moana had a special relationship, and she was definitely gave Moana a bunch of her strength and and she made a, uh she was a big part of what moana was i thought she I thought mm-hmm. she was a very important character in the film yeah and when she comes back i mean it just it pulls at the heartstrings it really does because uh, i i just think about the relationship that i have with my grandpa and uh you know i he's passed on but i still feel his i still feel like he is watching encouraging me and and so i don't know that was a theme and a moment that really rang true and i thought was was very beautiful definitely that was that was a beautiful part and i appreciate that they got all uh pacific islander vocal cast for this uh that i don't know there's just something about the timbre and the tone and it just made it feel rich as opposed to here's the contrast i like the movie the book of life i think it's it's a good movie but one of the things that annoyed me about that movie is that uh is the vocal cast uh it, when you have Channing Tatum playing <laughs> a Latino character or you have, you know, it just sort of, you know, takes you out of the movie a little bit. Some people had the same problems with Kubo 
and the two strings uh, with like Matthew McConaughey playing, you know, these characters. And I don't know. I really appreciate that with this movie that they really went for all Pacific Islander vocal cast. I thought, I thought that was huge. I thought that was great. And I, it was, I think it went yeah. even farther than the vocal cast, just the whole, um, with the story and the characters, yeah. they, they kept everything, uh, true to this culture that they were, uh, referencing, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. A good point. I, and that would be probably the biggest, well, one of the biggest pluses I would say over with Moana over Prince of Egypt, you were going to say is probably that where, where Prince of Egypt, you've got Sandra Bullock and you've got, and, and other sort of modern moments that maybe not feel as, uh, as authentic to, uh, either Hebrew or Egyptian culture. Sure. So it's and, you know, I guess while we're on this subject, one thing I, I noticed speaking on i thought the uh i guess the egyptian culture that we're we're shown in in prince of egypt i thought it was a little generic mm-hmm. um i thought it was kind of like something you'd, you'd see in your sixth grade history book you know it's a kind of just generic hieroglyphs in the background and a maybe gold ring wrists and uh, as opposed to Moana, they feels like they really went out and studied this culture and they incorporated it into the songs and into mm-hmm. the story and the props and everything. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. That's, that's true. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it feels a, a little bit like a, a Hollywood version of Egypt. Yeah. I guess that's what I was going for. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, um, let's see here. Oh, and then I guess the last character we should talk about with Moana is talk about uh, um, Tamato. Now, this is another, I feel like, divisive character. People either went with it or didn't go with it. Uh, it, it is random, but I think it works with this kind of Odysseus type of story, you know, where you have all these different things that, you know, she's encountering along the way. And you have Jemaine Clement, who I think is a great vocal performer, great, uh, unique voice. And I thought the song was really charming. I liked it. It, it was good. I thought. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No, like you said, it was, it was very, um, I guess maybe mythological. I don't, that's not the right word, but it, uh, the, the encounter with him and, um, and then the performance was great, of course, and everything. Um, and it was just another, uh, chapter in their, uh, you know, story along yeah. to replace the heart. I certainly like it way better than the playing with the big boys now in Prince of Egypt. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, I agree there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about just the animation and the, these both have wonderful animation, but I do think that Prince of Egypt is better because First of all, I just love 2D animation. And I think that this has some of the most beautiful sequences, in, in my honest opinion, uh, some of the most beautiful sequences of animation, 2D animation, I've ever seen. Uh, when uh, the, particularly like things like the crossing of the Red Sea, it's just so stunning, the animation, and beautiful. And uh, it also manages to be big, by, but still be intimate and reverent and to me and that's one of the the greatest things i think that they managed to pull off is just that that feeling of reverence uh, to this movie but but uh but i don't know just that sequence alone uh, to me would give it the edge but because i just i just it's breathtaking i think definitely yeah i have to uh I would have to even out my score in the middle i think for animation for prince of egypt i I'm also a fan of 2D over 3D just in general. Um, that's actually what I'm, I'm finishing up studying 2D animation in, in school. Oh, cool. But um, I, I thought, so maybe that I was being a little too uh, technical on some parts when I was judging it, but especially in the beginning when they're uh, riding the chariots through, you know, through the, their town. And uh, I think they knock off that nose off of um, the big statue and it falls through all the, the construction, um, you know, a scene I'm talking about in the Prince yeah, of yeah, Egypt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, there was from an animator's standpoint, there was some stuff in there. I, th- I thought it was, uh, maybe that scene was over ambitious for their, their uh, animation. 
it just seems like some some of the shot like the nose falling it came off a little stiff it some of the shots didn't have quite the life of uh, or, or very believable but i was being really uh picky about that things but i also agree with you uh, on other scenes like with the the ocean splitting and um uh, other i think it was there was a lot of things that were done really well and there were some things that i kind of nitpicked on just because i'm constantly looking mm -hmm. at timing and things in animation um, okay fair enough i love another sequence like i mentioned that i love is is uh moses's nightmare when the hieroglyphics come become alive and you say i don't know it's just i think it's beautiful i think it's it's a uh it's it's just more of an artistic achievement some of these sequences to me mm -hmm. than anything that you get in Moana, um, and it, it it's more uh, more unique uh, mm -hmm. and um, more of a of an artistic moment if that makes sense. I, sure. And I love the burning bush sequence. I think that sequence is perfect. I think it's it's I think it's as good if if you believe that this event actually happened, which I I personally do, that's how I th I think I think that's how it happened. <laughs> like right. I think that's how it looked and I think that's how it felt and and it's just so reverent <laughs> to use the word a million times. That's what I love about it. Like it, they could have gone like big and you know boom and whatever and and i just appreciate the fact that it, it was peaceful and uh, mm. calming to, to me I, yeah. I i love it and I, I also i i really love sequences like the um i thought the plagues were were very the way there was some artistry and some some uh, uh the way that those sequences were kind of handled uh, that was was good yeah definitely um yeah i agree the 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 stylistic choices and stuff worked pretty well um and that was one question i i had about the nightmare scene you talk about you know where the hieroglyphs come to life i was wondering if it was just um because i thought it was it was limited animation so what i mean by that my personal definition would you know instead of it being free flowing it was kind of like choppy you know um it showed the the people grabbing it was a uh, you know mm -hmm. less frames i thought and um i was wondering if if they did that as a stylistic choice to to make it look um like hieroglyphs moving or I if it was so. yeah. or if it was just like a, a money choice like well we're just gonna not animate this as much because it's mm -hmm. just this little scene and and i and i also i found another um well, comparison to Moana, I compare that part kind of to uh, Maui's tattoos. Yeah. And how, I guess it was, I think it was Eric Goldberg that was the head of, of uh, Moana's tattoos. And, and so I thought the animation was was beautiful. It was like top yeah. A plus, you know, on the, the snappiness and the, and the fluid motion compared, compared to the, the hieroglyphs in Prince of Egypt seemed a little bit uh, wonky. <laughs> yeah i guess i can see your point i i love the I, I should now say some things i love about the artistry of moana i i do love that the the tattoos and i guess it's it's a fair point it's not as much a they do tell stories i'm going to say it's not as much of sort of a a, a storytelling sequence you know where you get mm. uh the artistry in in that but they do i guess a little bit but i i think that the way they inter integrate 2d animation into your welcome is also really great and oh, yeah. and inventive and artistic and uh so i love that and the water is just so amazing in this movie i mean it just keeps getting more and more real i'm not somebody who's like I'm not somebody who's super down on CG animation. Like there's some in the fandom that are like, Ooh, you know, uh, but I'm not. Um, and I, I think it's beautiful. Uh, but I guess if, if I had to, as much as I love the water in Moana, I, I would take that Red Sea scene. I just, I love it. I think it's so amazing, but, but they're both great. So, you know, I guess the comparison is, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that water was amazing in Moana. Yeah, yeah, it was it was beautiful, and it, it even the way the ocean was a character in itself, yeah. I thought was was really awesome. Well, and it's it's interesting because there is actually a scene where you know it sort of parts the yeah. parts the the not the Red Sea, but the parts the ocean, and heads you know she walks towards Tefiti. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's another uh, similarity I saw in these two movies that don't seem like they have similarities, but I found a lot in there. Yeah, it's true. It's 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 true. Uh, but I I think that uh, that you know you have some interesting artistry with also the the introduction, you know, where she's explaining the curse and what happened, and I think that works really well i like that i i like sort of the 70s weird disco feel of shiny uh i think that's mm. really fun yeah um i don't know uh what are some other do you have any other artistic kind of things in moana that stood out to you well when you talk about like that the intro scene um i think it's it's just like eye candy you know it's so well done the the color schemes and the, and the patterns and everything it's it's something that uh you know like a baby a one-year-old or something could sit there and just enjoy because it's just beautiful to look at you know so yeah definitely all right so uh we let's talk about the uh, music so both of these movies have amazing music and i think that uh i think that the prince of egypt for me if you take out playing with the big boys now i i think that that the music in prince of egypt is more essential in making it a great movie in my opinion if you took out that music to me it would just be more of an average movie uh whereas i think if you took out the music for moana it would still be a pretty entertaining little movie hmm. um the, the the way that so much of the storytelling is done through the songs in the prince of egypt literally they're saying you know once you were my brother now you know and and like literally there's they're they're expressing their emotions and telling how they feel and and it, it has that sense of a sort of a almost a Les Mis kind of feel to it, a Broadway feel to it. The way that Frozen is, is also like this, in my opinion. Uh, the way that you have uh, them kind of working through their relationships also through the songs. And uh, so I think that uh, that's sort of the difference between the two of them, in my opinion. Yeah, that's that that's makes sense. Um, I, I also, I mean, that's very true and that kind of, plays to my point I, th I thought there was parts where um that the music almost I guess I almost felt like it, it kind of took away from the story because they concentrated on the music and uh, they or they they like let's say in the very beginning there's the a song playing as Moses's mom you know sends him away down the river mm -hmm. and I felt like that time could have been better spent introducing us to like maybe his brother and sister showing a little you know there was I felt like that time could have been better spent setting up uh, more stuff instead of uh, concentrating on having to get that song in. And um, so that was just, that was just my opinion on it. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly valid. That's for sure. I, I can see that. I guess I can see what you're saying. I, I'm a, I'm a musical theater girl. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I, I get it. I, I think that the vocal performances in moana are as as far as the songs are perfect like i know they're perfect <laughs> i mean some people will say oh well the rock isn't a very is, isn't the greatest singer in the world but the song was written for, for him and his range right. and and so you know like it's different than say in the new beauty and the beast where uh, it sounds not very good in my opinion because those songs weren't written for somebody with a limited range. They were written for Paige O'Hara, amazing, you know, or somebody of her caliber with amazing range. Is that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I just, I think it goes back to the way they put this movie together. Like they, they made the songs for the people that would be singing them. So that was just one extra step that made this movie that much better. Mm -hmm. And, and the music on Moana, I, I thought, um, like as a kid, I grew up loving the Lion King and, and that soundtrack. And this was the first, you know, score or soundtrack that I thought this was like the best since, um, since the Lion King. I just thought it was, it was just an amazing, all the songs on the, on the whole movie. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I love, I, I'm, I'm a 
big Frozen fan. So I, I love the music in Frozen. I think that it's tough for me because uh, I do love this as well. Um, but I don't know. I like I like it all. What can I say? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it is a great I Want song. Wonderful. I'm, I don't think it's... I don't think it's quite as good as Let It Go, but I think that it is a, a very good song. Definitely. Um, the uh, How Far I'll Go. Again, partly because she, her of her motivation is so pure. And, and so that makes the song more appealing. And her voice is just so beautiful. Ale Cravalho, um, she's just amazing. Definitely. Yeah, amazing. Like, did you watch the Oscars? I didn't. I didn't see okay. Her. Well, she gets hit in the head by this flag. <laughs> she doesn't even doesn't even face her. She just like keeps singing and she's doing great. I'm like, oh you're, wow, you're amazing! <laughs> Holy cow, uh, unbelievable. So, I mean, that's the only thing that makes me if if they're some of these upcoming live action films, they're going to be casting unknowns, and so that kind of makes me a little bit excited that maybe we'll we'll find some cool new talent like we found with uh, LA. Yeah. Some new discovery. Sure. Yeah. That would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, others, what are some of your other favorite songs that you like in uh so we got far I'll go and, um, well, I, I think, uh, you're welcome. If that's the title, yeah. you know, I mean, that was just so fun and, um, you know, the rocks almost rapping at some points you know and and yeah. just the stories behind it the fact that he's this demigod that created all these things and it's just it's put together so well it was, yeah. it was amazing and i you know i am moana and uh the you know at the end i think uh, i'm trying to think what are the other um the names of the song but i don't know you just they just help draw you in also you it, it also helps explain sort of the culture and the various parts of of the island uh, the screen right. turkeys called it the coconut song but it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm not sure the title of that song but that's one thing i wanted to mention is yeah. the way they they describe i mean the, the way the way they use the coconuts down to the t and everything it, yeah. it just really <laughs> paints a great picture mm -hmm. and it's super fun you know the even the dancing that they that goes along with it and everything it's a lot of fun yeah so also i do think that the if we're going to compare uh, as far as scores uh and and I, I do think shiny is a million times better than playing with the big boys now and it fits the tone way better too so oh definitely no comparison uh but uh, the score i think in the prince of egypt is one of hans zimmer's best if not my favorite i love the score it, it is just again captures that reverent quiet mm -hmm. sort of tone so well and it really just draws you into the scene and into the scenes and it, again i think it's amazing that you have a scene like the party of the red sea that's, that's so big and grand and you see and boom and it's it feels epic like that but there's still something sort of in the score that he wrote something sort of peaceful about it to me and so i think that that it is a amazing score and i wish that hans Zimmer would get back to writing scores like that because to me i in the last five ten years he's gotten very very predictable hmm. in his scores and uh, i guess there's ones like he did the score for boss baby so uh, i guess there's ones that are different but uh but i don't know i'm just so tired of the dream, dream, you know kind of thing that he does in every score I uh, okay right you know, like <laughs> Is they're so like you could just replace them and they'd be exactly the same. And so this was just like ugh, reminded me of the Lion King score. Um, so I love yeah, it. it. It fit very well. And it did, it worked very well. It, it definitely moves the, the film along great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I also do think Mark Mancina did a great score for the the moana i think it's it's a little bit of a shame in a way because lin manuel miranda he was just a co-writer in the songs but he's getting all the credit for all of the music hmm. in moana he wrote it with his name is i think it's probably partly just because the guy's name is hard to say but it's opataya for oh, okay like i didn't realize that 
yeah, so he was the co-writer of the songs along with Lin Manuel Miranda, and uh, and then Mark Pancina wrote the score. So of Moana. So yeah, it's kind of I feel, I feel bad. Sort of like uh, Tim Burton gets the credit for all of Henry Selleck's genius. Oh right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that happens a lot more than we realize too. Just yeah. in everything. Yeah, I was just telling somebody the other day. It's like. Uh, well, yeah, Tim Burton didn't direct Nightmare for Christmas, and he didn't direct Coraline, and he didn't direct <laughs> Peach, but everyone thinks he did. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, in my opinion, I I would put the the music of Prince of Egypt over the music in Moana just because I like that kind of musical. I guess is what it comes down to, hmm. at, where they're sort of telling the story through music it's very like i said very lame is very broadway-ish and i like that so but um okay uh so those i have already is that all the main main care main um, categories that we talked about characters animation music I have- oh messages so yeah so the messages that's the last category uh they both have great messages i you know it, it's hard because the in one case they had to create their own message whereas prince of egypt it's just this bible story you know what i mean i i i I feel a little bit like can we really give them that much credit right (laughs) (laughs) it's like um but there are i think some nice messages that you get out of the unique take that they had on it uh where uh, with the idea of sort of uh, these two brothers and this and and the, like beware of pride and the the thing that the that pride can be your undoing and I don't know if you necessarily take that out of reading it in the Bible or take it out of the other versions of the Ten Commandments. I love Yul Brenner; he's amazing, but I don't know if I necessarily take that out of his performance in the original uh, film, uh, Charlton Heston film. And so I I, I appreciate that that they did that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they they probably chose, you know, what they wanted to to show more of or what they wanted to convey more. And that was definitely one of the things that they should, the fault of, of his pride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas Moana, um, the message, I really appreciate the m- message about your, your ancestors and honoring the people who came before you and uh, that they were voyagers. And I, I think that that's, lovely and i i think that the 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 messages of friendship and and loyalty and and just some other really good messages i don't know what did you take from it right no well from moana i I thought one of the the coolest things about it was that she she had to go and break away into this unknown territory and and do this new uh scary thing but she still uh, like you said, she kept her ancestors in mind. She she's able to still be the leader that her people need. She she doesn't go just all the way. You know what? You know, forget all this old stuff. I'm going to do, forge this new way. She finds a way to to forge a new path while still keeping important traditions and keeping her her people. Um, you know, right there with her. Mm-hmm. So I thought that that was a, a cool message of, of kind of finding a balance, you know, forging a new way while keeping a balance with the old way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love that in Moana also. And, uh, you know, she, she never gives up. She's persistent. Uh, and, you know, so that's obviously a really wonderful quality as well. And, uh, and there, I think there's also positive messaging in the fact that she does look, uh, look normal and somebody that little girls can, I think, look up to. And I, 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 I think that they can look up to various aspects of all the Disney princesses. Uh, but she's, she's somebody that is a unique, new, refreshing addition to the, to the girls. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, for <laughs> and sure. boys can look up to her, I think very much. Yeah. 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 She's a very um, noble character. Um, another, you know, another message I thought that was big was kind of, just this almost sounds cliche but a type of balance with nature you know i mm-hmm. thought the way they had to restore the heart and the um just kind of how falling out of balance with nature can create destruction and and you know the end of everything yeah um, so i thought that was an important message in the story yeah me too 
I liked that too. And just, I just bonded so much with the character. And like when she, when she cries, like I wanted to cry and you just really felt they did such a good job uh, just making you feel what she was feeling. Definitely. Yeah. So I, yeah. So for me, I guess when it comes down to it, I love both of these films very much. And it is hard because Moana is just fresh. I know I, I, I've been, I've loved Prince of Egypt for almost, what is it? Uh, Since 1998, I think is when it came out. (laughs) I've loved it for a long time. And I've also had to see with Prince of Egypt, I've also had to see uh, particularly with DreamWorks and the way that, uh, you know, of course, Shrek was the big breakout hit, and uh, the 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 this they had this this amazing potential that this film uh, demonstrated of really like diving into characters and making artistic works and really making something beautiful, and then then they they had this big hit hit in Shrek, and I feel like personally they have never. Uh, that I feel, I feel like personally that set them on the wrong track and it really set animation on the wrong track. Uh, that, uh, I mean, it even hurt, I think, Disney for most of the 2000s, you know, where they were going on the Shrek kind of tr- uh, Shrek track. And uh, it, it, Pixar didn't, but, but I don't know. I just feel like, oh, if only, like, if only they had gone on this track, if only they had followed the Prince of Egypt method and made movies like this and Stallion's Spirit of the Cimarron and movies that were bold and beautiful and had a, had an artistic vision to them instead of just sort of parody films, which I feel like they, they do a lot. And uh, I don't know, it's just frustrating to me when I look at like something like this year when you have the boss baby and captain underpants and despicable me three and the emoji movie. And, you know, it's just like, Oh, yeah. I, I think it's disheartening for all of us animation fans to see kind of a lot of times in the industry, it's just what sales what's already a known formula that's going to sell is, is what ends up getting done because, you know, they, they want to make their return. And uh, like you said, the bolder, more artistic movies don't quite, get the light of day that they should or they don't get made even because there's there's not the people that are pull, that are making the movies that are, are only counting on certain formulas and yeah i mean and you can even make that claim with moana even though it did very well uh you know sing made more money than moana uh secret life of pets made more money than moana you know you're just like oh my gosh it's just kind of depressing but right <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I, I, I do, the thing I guess that wins me over to the, to the point where I do feel like the Prince of Egypt is one of the, one of my favorite animated films mm-hmm. is, is because I feel like it, it, it gets that blending of epicness and reverence so well. And I think that it manages to tell a very big story, but make it feel intimate and close to these characters for me. And I love the way that I love the music so much. And uh, I think that Stephen Schwartz has a knack for writing about religion. <laughs> a lot of people know him from Wicked, but in my opinion, uh, Godspell, Children of Eden, and Prince of Egypt are just beautiful uh, films that uh, are musicals that he's written. And so, yeah, that's, uh, um, that's uh, kind of why I, I think it'll always be, I would always sort of go with Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt. I love Moana. I do. So right. get it. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, and I guess if I had to give my final analysis, I, I would, you know, choose Moana over Prince of Egypt. I feel like it had close to 20 years, um, you know, to kind of animation has just improved so much in certain aspects and, and, um, I feel like just the people who made the two films now they have such an advantage when they make Moana with the technology and, and all the knowledge that they know. I think that, and the, the fact that it was a story just built from the ground up for animation, I think it just came out close to as perfect as can be today, you know? So it's, it's hard to, for something from, you know, 20 years back uh, to, for me to come to compete with something like this today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're totally different 
uh, different styles and, you know, different, but luckily we can love both of them yeah. <laughs> or we can appreciate both. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and and uh, so anyway, it's fun to compare and contrast things. And so I appreciate you joining me for this and uh, yeah, we'll have to think of some other weird, uh, weird combinations and, and compare and contrast. It might be fun. Yeah. Well, this was a lot of fun. You know, thank you for having me and, and hopefully we can get some more cool talk is cool topics just to kind of chat about. Yeah, and if anybody has any ideas of compare contrast that you'd like us to do, put in the comment section. I'd love to hear. And uh, so, yeah, where can people find you? Um, just on Twitter at Darren Hoff. I just tweet a bunch of random nothingness, so check me out. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I'll have that in the description section. And, uh, yeah, so this should be a pretty busy week for the podcast. Uh, we, I will be reviewing the latest episode of Doctor Who sometime. And uh, and also looking at the another Anna Green Gables thing, getting ready for the new series. Um, it's a graduation week, so things are a little for some of my friends, and so things are a little all over the place. But we'll do it eventually. And uh, we're going to have for family movie night this week. We are going to be doing ET, which should be a lot of fun. So oh, cool! I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks so much, and uh, we will talk soon. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you.